Thank you, uh, Mr. Rege and Dr. Singhal for giving me this opportunity to speak on the subject of heat treatment equipment. Uh, I have had a long association with uh, the heat treatment and the furnace industry. Uh, I'm going to share some of my experience and uh, with support of data on uh, following sections uh, regarding the heat treat equipment. First is the capacity and what, how to select the right capacity equipment. Uh, second is the heating system, then the atmosphere system, process control, furnace layout and mechanisms. I would like to take questions after each section because these are quite separate and uh, uh, there will be uh, a discontinuity if we take all the questions at the end of the presentation. So, shall I start? Yes, yes, yes please start. Okay, okay. Let me share my screen. What is this? Is the presentation visible to everyone? Yes, it is visible. Okay. You can make it full screen though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did this. I'm able to scroll. Okay. So the first part is the capacity of the furnace. <clears throat> furnace manufacturers usually specify the capacity in terms of weight per batch for the batch type furnaces or on the basis of weight per hour for continuous type furnaces. Uh, is, is this the right way to describe the capacity of the furnace that we shall find out later? Because many a times uh, the users find that uh, they are not able to load to the full capacity what is specified and there are reasons for that. So choosing uh, the right equipment is very important because uh, the heat treatment equipments have a very long life because there are few moving parts and the uh, basic structure remains intact for a very long time. So once you have got a furnace, you have to live with it for a many, many years. What are the considerations for size selection? First is the furnace supplier's recommendation. Normally what we do is we tell the furnace supplier that this is, uh, these are the parts and this is what I want to do. And then based on that, these suppliers make recommendations to the customer. Second is the space limitation. Then the investment part and the operating cost. Now, uh, usually uh, it is apparent that using large size equipment will give you more capacity uh, in the available space. It may also give you more capacity per investment and sometimes lesser operating cost per unit production. However, going for large equipments is not always an advantage. From the quality and material size point of view, it is the uh, material si size means the parts, cross section of the parts and weight of individual components, as well as the hardenability of material play a role in selection of the right equipment. Now this is the data which I have picked up from uh, an article by Dr. 
doc by mr uh, dan herring uh, which is uh, named as how to load parts in this article what he has given is uh, the sizes of different furnaces of course this being an american uh, this is this is in inches and uh, the area is in square feet so what it says is that in a 24 inch by 36 inch by 24 inch furnace the maximum part area that can be loaded is between 180 to 250 square feet now in case of small uh, parts which have excuse me which have a larger uh, area to weight ratio the area becomes a restriction more than the uh, weight or the available volume so what i did is to find out uh, you know what is the constraint i did a ratio of uh, the volume uh, that means the first this is the base i took this as the base and the mean value of this area and then took the ratios of each of these and plotted them against the furnace size so you can see from this graph that whereas the weight weight capacity increases more rapidly than the area capacity that means the larger furnaces uh, in on larger furnaces the surface area will become a uh, constraint rather than the weight so these uh, furnaces do not get utilized fully and there is always a possibility of getting rejects because uh, of uh, overloading uh, which is a possibility for these larger furnaces we had a practical experience of this type when uh, i had a furnace of 1500 kg capacity particularly this size 36 48 36 and we were doing a part called bearing cup which has a very large surface area and a thin cross section since our furnace allowed we loaded almost 5200 of these cups and these were of 15 cr3 material which is of low hardenability we had done all our uh, proposals based on this loading and we always thought that we would achieve uh, good results uh, with this much of loading our what happened in uh, practice was uh, with this loading we got lot of variation in case depth and hardness so the we took this up with the customer and told him that we are not able to load fully okay but the customer said that now that you have quoted the price this is what we we can give you okay so finally what happened is uh, we had to find a way out and we started doing only carburizing in the furnace and outsource the hardening part to a mesh belt supplier so this is what we realized practically that these larger furnaces are not suitable for doing thin walled and low hardenability parts so anyone who is doing carbon nitriding or doing parts which are smaller in weight than let's say 300 grams or 500 grams should never opt for a large capacity furnace even if parts are available in large numbers the similar experience was there with many uh, suppliers who are doing uh, small parts like sintered parts and they tried them in large capacity furnaces there is another issue and that is whenever we go for a large furnace sometimes the ratio of volume and the claimed capacity do not match so in this exercise what i did is uh, i got the Uh, standard furnace of 600 kg as the basis 
and worked out a ratio of volume to weight and then i applied this to various sizes available in the market and what i found is that if you apply the same ratio there is a difference between what is the calculated capacity and the claimed capacity the weight uh, which the furnace can handle really is not of much importance to us what we need is the space when you buy a furnace you buy a space in the uh, in the hot chamber uh, the weight is of very little consequence so this was one aspect uh, of uh, the capacity which we realized and uh, therefore when we select the furnace we should take think carefully and not be encouraged by you know the lower investment or the low less uh, uh, operating cost which is claimed by the supplier <coughs> now any questions on this part because once we move to the next one uh, you know this this is quite a separate any issues on the capacity hello not had any question up till now let us see if anyone puts anything on the chat okay the next part is the furnace subsystems that means every furnace manufacturer supplies you uh, with different types of options you know regarding the heating the atmosphere process control transport and quenching and cooling we'll consider one at a time heating so what are the options available for heating in atmosphere furnaces we have one question we usually sir, have... sorry sir i am interrupting in between we have one question yes. for the first part how is quenching yes. efficiency considered quenching uh, see the normal requirement is that you consider 1 as to 10 uh, you know the ratio of oil uh, to this and uh, this is the total result so we cannot say whether it is because of uh, quenching efficiency or whether it is because of the density of parts loaded so but most likely the quenching efficiency uh, because you are loading so many parts and Uh, when the surface area is large the uh, vaporization of oil is very fast and you know lot of heat is released in the oil at the same time which you can even see you know there is a large flame which you can see from the vent and the door when you quench this type of uh, loads so obviously the quenching efficiency is not going to be good i cannot put a number on it but when you have a large surface area the quenching is definitely not good any any thing you would like to add sandeep no it's okay okay please continue mr joshi yeah. actually yeah. the the options are uh, electricity or lpg or now the pipe natural gas which is available so if we compare these three unfortunately these are all sold on different units okay electricity is sold on kilowatt hour or kva or kva hr now uh, lpg on kilogram or the weight basis and uh, png on cubic meter basis or million btu basis so what <clears throat> to compare the three we have to convert them all into kilo calories because heat is what we are going to need in the furnace so 1 kilowatt hour of electricity is equivalent to 860 kilo calories and 1 kilogram of lpg is approximately 14500 kilo calories 
considering a combustion efficiency of 85%, we can consider that one kg of LPG is equivalent to about 10 kilowatt hour of electricity. So this gives you an easy conversion to compare the cost between LPG and uh, electricity. At present, uh, in uh, Maharashtra, the LPG is about 81 rupees a kg, and electricity is approximately 9 rupees. So, rupees per kilowatt hour is, in case of LPG, 8.1, and in case of electricity, it is 9 rupees. In, for, for piped natural gas, okay, one cubic meter uh, of gas is about 40, uh, 43 rupees. And uh, uh, it is equivalent to 8 kilowatt hour because uh, one cubic meter of piped natural gas gives you 9,000 kilocalories. So considering that, if you convert it into price per kilowatt hour, you get a value of 5.5. So the piped natural gas is the most economical fuel at present. We do not know whether it will last long uh, because more and more automobile now you started using uh, CNG. So this price may also go up. But at present, PNG is the choice, <coughs> preferred choice. If PNG is available, then Clearly, it is a leading choice for uh, the heat source. Now, in case of uh, <clears throat> electrical furnaces, the issue is that uh, power outages are frequent uh, in most parts of uh, our state. And uh, since atmosphere heat treatment is a continuous process, we need a standby power supply to run the furnaces during power outages. And the most common uh, secondary source is uh, DG's, DG sets. But as you know, diesel is very expensive now. One liter of diesel approximately at best efficiency gives you three and a half kilowatt hour. So one kilowatt hour is about 27 rupees if you use diesel. So, Keeping this in mind, the gas-fired option is good where you do not have a regular uh, supply of electricity or you don't have a uh, dedicated power supply which does not fail frequently. Uh, in terms of uh, maintaining the accuracy, I think all options are Similar, I do not see that there is any major difference in terms of temperature uniformity or accuracy, whether you use gas, electricity, or uh, pipe natural gas. In uh, electricity, of course, there are other um, issues uh, regarding the heater failures, which are fewer in case of uh, gas, um, because uh, the burners uh, are much more reliable. Anything regarding heat source? See, till, uh, till the year uh, 1991, before the first Gulf War, almost everyone used uh, gas for heating applications. Okay. Later on, because the uh, at that time, the difference between the uh, gas price and the electricity price was very high. Later on, uh, because the uh, fuel prices went up, uh, see in the year 2007, LPG was uh, 24 rupees. And today it is 81 rupees. So these fossil fuel prices uh, have skyrocketed and that is why now, we have this option of electricity and of course PNG has come up uh, in certain locations. It is not available everywhere still. Any 
questions about heating no sir no questions on the chat okay the next item is the atmosphere the atmosphere provision uh, to these furnaces okay there are some options about the atmosphere now the most important thing is holding positive pressure in the furnace we need to hold positive pressure in the furnace to ensure that air does not enter from anywhere and there is another issue is after uh, operation of the intermediate door or after quenching there is uh, suction created in the furnace to fill it up as fast as possible we have to provide the atmosphere gas now uh, the capacity of the furnace to hold uh, pressure at a minimum flow rate of atmosphere gas is important we do not need a lot of gas for effective carburizing in fact most of the gas goes out of the vent and it is burnt this gas is expensive uh, at present whether you use the endo gas or you use methanol based uh, atmosphere it is about 15 rupees per cubic meter so the less uh, gas you feed the better is the economy of the process another issue is when we uh, feed the gas into the furnace it is at room temperature that is it is at, at uh, the ambient temperature when it enters the furnace we have to heat it up to the operating temperature if it is carburizing then to more than 900 degree centigrade the uh, heating of this gas takes up uh, energy from your furnace okay and if you feed about 10 cubic meters of gas it takes about 3 to 4 uh, kilowatt hours of energy so this is another waste which happens if you feed more atmosphere gas excessive flow of atmosphere also leads to more soot formation because more atmosphere uh, the carrier gas uh, needs uh, more uh, enrichment to maintain the cp so if you uh, keep a high flow rate of gas Uh, carrier gas then you also need to uh, feed more uh, enrichment gas like lpg to uh, maintain the carbon potential in the furnace another issue with uh, the high flow of gas is some people might have noticed that uh, the material which is located below the lans the atmosphere lans looks different from uh, the material which is located elsewhere okay sometimes we observe that there is slight oxidation however these effects are not too severe if you check the parts they are normally okay so this is not a serious issue but still uh, you can see some difference uh, in the uh, appearance and there is always a uh, risk you know you suspect that there is something wrong with the parts now why is it that we are not able to maintain uh, pressure with uh, less atmosphere uh, flow one of the major leakage points is the furnace door because this is a large area for a normal 600 kg furnace the area of the door is at least 1 square meter so what happens is if we try to ma maintain a pressure of let's say 1 millibar it applies a force of 10 kg outwards on the door so trying to maintain higher pressure means you are exerting more force onto the door and then the leakage starts uh, therefore uh, the execution of the door that is how the door is locked onto the door frame is important and repeated use of this door 
leads to some leakages. So to make up this loss, we have to feed more atmosphere. Another issue, as I told you, is because whenever there is a suction created due to uh, the closing of the door, um, the intermediate door, or uh, the quenching of the charge, and if you are not able to fill that uh, suction, uh, that um, uh, vacuum quickly, then there is a chance of air entering in the furnace and an explosion. So usually, uh, if you don't have an alternative of feeding nitrogen in the front chamber, then you have to feed more gas to make up uh, this vac to make up the uh, suction in the front chamber. At the time of quenching, uh, the pressure increases sometimes to more than 50 millibar. So the force on the door is uh, up to 500 kgs. And then you can see a large flame coming out of the door. If you have uh, parts uh, which are having larger surface area, then you can see a larger flame. That means uh, there is much more heat released into the oil at, uh, sh at, in short time. Now, what happens if we don't maintain a high positive pressure in the furnace? There is a radial fan at the top uh, to maintain the circulation of atmosphere gas. This radial fan creates suction near the shaft of the fan. And if the seals are damaged or they are not put properly, and this suction overcomes the pressure in the furnace, then air can enter and uh, you may lose CP uh, in the furnace. Uh, so this is one essential part uh, of the furnace design. And uh, uh, that is why you know, maintaining the higher pressure is important. The next issue is now, what atmosphere do we use? We have these two options. One is the endogas and another is methanol nitrogen. Uh, today, if you consider in terms of cost, both endogas and methanol nitrogen are uh, per cubic meter basis uh, similar. Only thing because endogas is available in large quantities, people tend to feed more endogas in the furnace. Whereas in methanol nitrogen, they use it uh, sparingly. Issue with endogas is that it cannot be stored. So uninterrupted flow of endogas is a challenge. If there is any problem with the generator, then either you have to have a standby endogas generator, which is at temperature, or you have to have a methanol nitrogen system, which will take, take care until the uh, endogas generator can be started again. Now this is possible and uh, we did this at one location where we could seamlessly change between endogas and nitrogen methanol without any change in the CP. Okay, this I mean no one even noticed that we had stopped the endo flow and uh, started uh, the furnace on methanol nitrogen. Only issue with methanol nitrogen system is that you have to maintain uh, definitely a constant flow rate of nitrogen and methanol. If you make a change in any of the two components, then the CO content of the atmosphere, the carbon monoxide content of the atmosphere uh, changes and then the calibration of your CP meter goes wrong and the process can be affected. So this is most critical for the nitrogen methanol. Otherwise, both the systems are equivalent uh, and uh, uh, there is no limitation or there is no effect on the quality of parts, whether you use methanol nitrogen or endogas. Any questions on the atmosphere part? Yes, there are two questions. The first one is from Mr. Ganpati. Yes. The continuous uh, furnace is uh, pressure, uh, uh, pressure versus process atmosphere, any relationship is there. In a continuous furnace, whether the pressure inside the furnace or yes. the process atmosphere is 
is there a relationship pressure and actually i didn't get the question pressure oh. versus process atmosphere process atmosphere see in uh, continuous furnace is the only difference as compared to the batch furnace okay if i have understood his uh, question rightly let me answer like this is that there is a frequent opening of doors in the, the continuous furnaces so what happens is that you lose the atmosphere and then you have to make it up again uh, frequently there is a definitely some loss of cp uh, till it uh, recoups and reaches the set value so this is one limitation with the continuous carburizers but if you have deep case material the um, uh, these furnaces have an advantage because they deliver the parts uh, at one location you know uh, so for deep cases uh, it is a good option but for shallow case depths uh, this is a problem that every time you lose the cp when the door opens and uh, uh, for shallow case depths uh, you have to push the push interval is shorter so you have a more uh, uh, loss of atmosphere uh, if you process shallow case depths in a continuous furnace as compared to the batch furnace there is another is question from mr sandeep rege he is uh, asking yes. uh is methanol nitrogen system uh gives does it give good quality consistency compared to the endo yes it does in fact in fact the 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 gas that you get inside the furnace is same as the endo gas you have the same components you have nitrogen uh carbon monoxide and hydrogen and if you you can set whatever uh, carbon monoxide uh, percent you want the only issue is if you change the ratios that means if you are not able to maintain whatever is the set flow rate of methanol and the set flow rate of nitrogen because what happens is your cp controller is calibrated for certain co value or co factor in some controllers they call it co factor in others they call it co percentage okay so that remains constant only if your nitrogen and uh, methanol flows are constant if they change in between then there is a problem with this system otherwise it gives you exactly the same results as uh, the endo gas and is this system safe to operate yes it is uh, many companies are using it for years together and uh, uh, there is uh, no issue uh, if you have a uh, a dosing pump installed and uh, you have a nitrogen gen in fact it is safer than endo gas because normally if you have endo gas okay then you don't have a standby nitrogen to that extent right whereas here even if methanol fails you have nitrogen which is continuously feeding into the furnace so there is no loss of pressure uh, in case uh, your methanol flow stops for any reason whereas in endo gas unless you provide separately the nitrogen you don't have a uh, so i think this uh, methanol nitrogen is a safer system than compared to the than endo gas yeah next question from mr mahesh and, and and you uh, pardon me no no you continue i'll say the question later on right you know in fact uh, as i told you we, with one of our customer he wanted uh, the nitrogen methanol as a standby for endo gas and we did a seamless change means when half the charge was processed into the process 50% process done we changed from uh, endo to methanol nitrogen and there was absolutely no change and the entire product was okay so even as a standby it works wonderful okay. there is absolutely no difference uh, you will not find any difference in the product quality uh, in case you use methanol nitrogen next question from mr maheshwaran they use fc20 atmosphere black suit on the product surface especially in carbon hydriding he is asking how to avoid this suit in sqf see people have changed to methanol nitrogen or endo gas because uh, many in fact high temp itself who promoted this system in uh, in the beginning they have started using methanol nitrogen now okay 
because they also found the same uh, this thing you know when you feed a lpg directly into the furnace it doesn't crack completely and leads to formation of soot one option is you can change over to nitrogen methanol and uh, it's very easy to do I mean, if you don't want to spend much money, you can even do it with the drip feed arrangement. Okay. Next question is from Mr. Somnath. He is asking: With nitrogen methanol system, is controlling CP a challenge? Uh, as I told you, if you maintain the ratio of I... nitrogen and methanol constant, okay, then there is no problem. but if you uh, don't maintain the ratios then there will be an issue so periodically once in an hour or you know once in uh, two hours somebody has to check that the flows are right if you did that then there is no issue absolutely you get very consistent results mm -hmm. and with dosing pumps you know the flow rates don't change what you have to do is have a independent dosing pump on each furnace right so right. that Uh, your flows don't change at all and ni nitrogen being a gas generally you don't find any change because you have a pressure regulator right, right. unless unless the lance chokes okay that is one possibility but it is very rare mm -hmm. uh how to ensure quality of methanol apparently methanol quality keeps on varying see methanol is a product which is used in chemical industry in a very big way okay so this is all we suspect that there is a change in quality you checking is possible by uh, measuring specific gravity you use a hydrometer and the specific gravity is 0.92 okay so if <coughs> water uh, gets mixed then the specific gravity of the uh, mixture is higher than 0.92 okay so this hydrometer is an easy check okay another thing people do is they take a small amount of methanol in a petri dish and burn it okay if you have any residue then uh, because methanol burns very clean you can even not see the flame you know so if there is any residue uh, of course you can uh, find out if uh, there is but these these things are very rare because uh, in pharmaceutical and chemical industry uh, methanol is uh, available is used in millions of tons okay so it is such a product that uh, you know any mixer any unless you buy from a non genuine source i mean who intentionally mixes something otherwise i mean it's 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 very reliable and uh, we have never had any problem i have been using methanol from uh, 2000 from the year 2000 and uh, i have never had a single instance where uh, you know because of methanol our process was affected so Yes. In a continuous furnace, and this process is used possible. worldwide. I mean, most of the European companies use this methanol system. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ganpati wants to know: in continuous furnace, more soot formation is blocking his exhaust dampers. How to avoid that? Currently, they are doing furnace burnout every month using endo gas. I think we will have to check his uh, calibration of the. cp if something is wrong you know and the cp actual cp is much higher than what is shown on the meter or controlled okay then that is a possibility uh, i feel that that is the most likely cause or or if you are setting a very high cp for carburizing which is beyond the soot limit see there is a solubility limit of carbon uh, in the atmosphere okay and uh, there are some controllers which just don't allow you to set like at 900 degree centigrade it is 1.17% uh, cp okay so if you set a value which is more than that uh, the soot limit at that temperature then you, you will have more soot because the carbon is beyond the solubility limit in the atmosphere so basically what you are telling him is that he needs to look at his at his real parameters inside the furnace and possibly look at recalibrating the equipment that he is using exactly so one more point ganpati see the carbon potential meter no no the carbon potential meter shows you cp based on three inputs one is the 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 millivolts from the oxygen probe 
second is the temperature that you have fed through a thermocouple and third is the co factor which you have you have put uh, into the controller okay so you have to check all these three parameters whether it is uh, receiving the right temperature signal whether it is receiving the right millivolt signal and whether the co factor setting is right otherwise the cp is not going to be right acha one more point mr ganpati continuous furnace Mr. Joshi. More soot formation block, uh, yeah, block in exhaust dampers. How to avoid? Uh, you are doing uh, burnout. Uh, this is what is the this thing? Currently, we are doing furnace burnout every month using endo gas. You are using the furnace in endo gas. If you, are, how do you do burnout? That's the that's the issue. And one more point here in. Uh, if c2o for atmosphere black soot on product uh, surface especially in carbon nitriding check the in, uh, this ammonia uh, this thing also you know because sometimes if uh, ammonia is actually hygroscopic so that also will uh, give you some in effect on uh, uh, your soot formation so check how much you are putting uh, 5 ppm uh, LP sorry, five LPM is uh, should be the thing for uh, carbonate adding. This FC twenty is, I think, air and LPG, right? Air LPG. Yeah, but he is air and LPG, but he also you know CO two and LPG. It is CO two and LPG. CO two and LPG is, I think, FC thirty uh, five. If I I am correct, they called it FC thirty five, uh, which was CO two and uh, LPG. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, air and LPG, they call it LPG. Yeah, yeah. So air and you know if it's yeah, right. But that was not very successful. We also tried it. Hmm. You know, especially uh, for long process time, you get lot of soup. Yes, yes. Because uh, you know these are all for shallow case depths. Yes, yes, yes. No, and item themselves are not using it anymore. So, yeah, yeah. they are going for FC thirty five, right? Hmm. No, even that CO two, I doubt whether they use most of them. No, CO two we are using for last forty years. So CO two. Uh, yeah, yeah. In one furnace, furnace, right? Yeah, in one furnace. Yeah. One furnace. Yeah, I saw it. Right. But I don't. I'm not. Ganpati, we tried it on uh, a small yeah, scale, then, but. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, there is uh, Ganpati is asking for unmute. Ganpati will take it up. Uh, uh, you, we will make you unmute after the whole. Uh, uh, yeah. Technical lecture is over. Yeah, we will answer all your queries. In the meantime, thanks, you thanks, please uh, keep on putting questions in the chat, and we can take chat it box. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next is the process control. Uh, they. Uh, Furnaces are equipped mostly these days with uh, uh, recipe control of the process. Okay, now in some furnaces there is a limitation on the number of segments that you can program. Okay, like four segments, you know the heating, carburizing, diffusion, and hardening. But uh, in other controllers you can program any number of segments. The advantage with more number of segments is that you can. program uh, ramp up uh, segments where you know which enables you to reach the temperature and uh, cp at the same time so your uh, process becomes more repeatable than in case you know depending on the load your temperature may lag behind the cp or cp may lag behind the temperature so that is the the thing one should look for uh, then the second is the pid control for temperature and for atmosphere that is for cp then uh, deviation alarms which are compulsory uh, in cq9 and the sure soak sure soak means that if uh, uh, the uh, temperature or the cp deviates uh, uh, more than the deviation band uh, from the set values then uh, the counting stops the process uh, goes on hold now this pid control has contributed a lot in uh, understanding of uh, carburizing process as well as you know giving us a 
uh, more confidence about what is happening you know before the load comes out now uh, you know that uh, we have a closed loop control system for uh, these parameters uh, that is for temperature and for carbon potential what the closed loop means is that your uh, control signal is calculated based on the feedback okay in case of temperature it is the millivolts from the thermocouple okay and then it is compared with the set value and the error signal is generated this error signal in turn changes the control signal now this uh, the error signal controls the uh, the the control signal through three parameters uh, one is the proportionate band proportionate band is the width in which your uh, signal output the control output signal changes between 100 to 0 that means when the deviation is on the minus side uh, this is for the direct process control it is on the minus side let's say by 10 or 20 degrees then it will go to 100 uh, 100% and when it is on plus side by 20 degrees then it will go to zero in between it is on the ratio basis that means at exactly the set value it is 50% now uh, because of this still there is some difference between the uh, set value uh, even if you implement proportionate uh, control there is some difference between the uh, control value and the set value and if it continues for a long time then an integral signal works that means this error is integrated over a period of time and that signal is also fed to the uh, that also generates an output uh, which is added to this third is the rate of change uh, rate of change of the error value which also affects the control signal so all together what Uh, this does is that it enables you to reach a steady state that means your set value and control value are both the same and this can be maintained throughout the process uh, time okay now what are the advantages of doing this uh, number one is that let's consider for the uh, case of temperature when you have reached the temperature uh, of the that means your load as well as the furnace has reached the uh, process temperature then there is no energy received by the load from the uh, heaters or the burners okay so whatever is the energy input required to maintain the temperature is only for two reasons one is the losses through the refractories and second is for heating the atmosphere so what happens is that you reach a steady state value of heat input either in terms of uh, percentages or in terms of the actual flow rates uh, or or the ampere current okay whereby you can monitor whether there is whether everything is right whether your uh, temperature uh, means if you know for sure that my furnace reaches 900 degree centigrade and maintains at 900 with 40% output level then you know that everything is right with your process controller as well as the thermocouple so it gives you confident in confidence in the respect of your process control similarly for carbon potential the cp value which is measured by the cp controller by as i said converting the value of oxygen pro millivolt the co factor which is fed in and the temperature input and it is controlled controls the set point and it controls the the output in case of uh, this the control signal in terms of uh, in the case of cp control is the modulating valve opening or or the uh, the solenoid valve opening so that percentage also is uh, constant once you have reached the uh, cp value and you know from time to time that uh, what are the values which are required and you can get a confidence in the case in a particular batch if you find that the flow rate of enrichment is too high or too low 
then you can uh, definitely uh, look for the reason and uh, take corrective action. So this uh, is possible only with because on off controllers the parameters used to change so rapidly that we could not judge you know whether the process is going right or not. So this has uh, helped a lot uh, in both understanding the process as well as controlling and getting a confidence regarding you know the process accuracy. Uh, all all the furnaces today, most of the manufacturers provide this facility. Only thing is it has to be tuned properly. That means these PID values have to be tuned properly so that you get a very accurate and stable control. Yes, of the temperature. We have a question, uh, probably this belongs to the previous section. Uh, this is from Surya, where he's saying carbon potential and temperature are inversely proportional. While the gas composition is a constant, so he's probably looking for a comment on that. Carbon potential and temperature are and inversely proportional. Are inversely, yeah. The temperature of the same atmosphere. Okay, let's say that the composition is same and the temperature increases, then it will have lower CP value. That is right. Hmm. What else? While the gas composition is constant. Yes, it is. I mean, because see what happens as you go to higher temperature uh, in the car, CO and CO2 parameters, the uh, CO carbon monoxide becomes more stable. So the propensity to discharge carbon reduces at higher temperature. Therefore, that CP is lower. For same composition of gas at higher temperature, the CP is lower, which is quite uh, understandable. Right, right, right. You can look at the charts also, they show the same thing. Uh, for the PID, we don't have any questions. I think we can proceed further. Okay. Now, there are two options in uh, batch furnaces, uh, batch seal quench furnaces. That is in-out and straight-through furnace. Uh, the in-out is more complicated because it has a push and pull. You know, the charge has to go in from one door and it comes out from the same door. So the charge machine is more complicated to understand, but uh, there are some advantages in in-out because it doesn't have a door on the hot chamber. Okay. Whereas in straight through furnaces, you have a door on the hot chamber, which is difficult to uh, seal or you know close uh, completely. Um, but uh, generally these straight through are easy from the point of view of uh, mechanisms because there is only push. You only push the charge. You don't need to pull it anytime. But usually the straight throughs, the ceiling is not as good as that in in out. So you have more atmosphere requirement in uh, this. The door uh, thickness of insulation at the door uh, uh, of hot chamber is less because it can you can't make it too heavy. So because of that and the area of the door is uh, quite large so the heat losses are more and uh, of course material handling means straight through you your material is delivered on the other side of the furnace so you have to again pull it back on the same side for washing or tempering so material handling is more in the straight through this is the in out integral furnace where the load comes back out on the same side and you don't have a door, you don't have, that means you only have two doors, whereas in a straight through you have three doors. Okay. In a straight through you have three doors here, the discharge door, the middle door and the loading door. So these are the differences now. Uh, if uh, people uh, want more ef efficiency and uh, want to save on energy and pollution, then the in-out is a better choice. Now, there are other types of batch furnaces uh, which are used in the industry. One is muffle, you know, for re reheating furnaces. Mm -hmm. Then pit type uh, retort mm -hmm. furnaces for carburizing, where you can do, if you want to do hardening, you have to do open quenching. 
generally used for very large parts. These days for small parts, nobody uses the pit type uh, retort furnaces. And the rotary retort is suitable for very small uh, fasteners, uh, which uh, require carbon nitriding or carburizing process. This is the rotor. See, many people use uh, mesh bed furnaces for carburizing or carbon nitriding, which is very inefficient because the uh, mesh bed furnace is a very long shell and the area of uh, uh, the surface, that is the furnace surface area is very large. So the heat loss in uh, that type of furnace is much higher as compared to rotary retort. So the rotary retort is a better option if you want to do carburizing. If you want to do only hardening, then uh, mesh belt is also good because uh, capacity-wise, it can have higher capacity. Other uh, furnaces which are named uh, due to you know their transport mechanisms like shaker earth, mesh belt, walking beam. Uh, rotary heart and pusher type furnaces. These are generally used for only specific applications and uh, but still very common. Now uh, the continuous carburizer line. So how do we compare the capacity of uh, continuous carburizer with that of uh, batch furnaces? So what one can do is uh, add up the charge area of all these uh, this is a furnace where you know the tray size is 510 by 510 and height is 540. So uh, that is in millimeters. So if you calculate uh, the total volume inside the furnace, it comes to about you know capacity of nine six hundred kg furnaces. Now the issue with continuous uh, carburizers, as I told you, the advantage is that you get all the parts at one location. So handling wise, it is good. The other advantage was, uh, which was earlier when we didn't have the programmable instruments was that the charges moved from one zone to the other. So you didn't have to set the instrument for uh, temperature and carbon potential uh, during the cycle time. But now with uh, the development of programmable instrument, uh, that advantage is uh, not there with the CGCs. So uh, if you compare uh, the CGC with the batch furnaces, you know, the CGC is uh, like a bus. It can take so many parts, uh, but it can process it to same case depth, okay? But the batch uh, seal quench furnaces, uh, these are like cars, you know, you can go to 10 destinations. But still people use buses because the one thing is the investment in 10 cars is more than one bus and the operating cost of 10 cars is also more than uh, that of uh, one bus. Whereas in, if you compare in case of uh, CGC, in, in, in many instances, uh, that is not the case. You know, the prices of these equipment, because there are not many manufacturers, uh, the prices are very high. And uh, uh, so using batch furnaces uh, is a, uh, what you call easier option for, uh, for at least the smaller companies, uh, uh, the bigger companies who have very large volumes. And uh, as I said, where deep cases are required, or whether you have a subsequent press quench or a, a plug quench operation. Only uh, there, I think there is an advantage of using the CGCs. For this particular pusher carburizing, I calculated the capacity as 5,004, which is equivalent to nine batch furnaces. But I think the investment as well as operating cost is higher than that of nine furnaces. So to end my presentation, uh, the key points are choice of equipment will have a long-term impact and therefore we have to be very careful. Then there is a need to ensure that the claimed capacity is realistic because later on we always feel, oh, I was told that this will be 1200 kgs. I'm only able to load 750 kgs. 
then uh, the third is uh, choosing of the equipment of right size thank you so much for patient listening thank you very thank much you, sir any question uh, yeah we'll take up a uh, few questions as they come up yeah so far so good i think a lot of people have asked many questions during the time at this thing so we will uh, so we, there are no questions as such at this moment in time where we are we have to be just take it up i had a question is, uh, which i would like uh, to ask uh, mr joshi uh, if we look at a mesh belt furnace you said mesh belt furnace the, the yes. heat loss is in mesh belt furnaces the heat loss from the furnace itself is fairly high because of the yeah. way it large surface area large, large yes, surface yes. area uh, also in mesh belt furnaces one more thing is there that you have a constant <laughs> atmosphere loss also happening when the doors are always open for a mesh belt furnace for the mesh to be able to come out of the furnace yeah. okay so yeah. uh, still that technology yes. is fair right yeah that is true right. that is fairly popular why is that so see for smaller parts when you quench uh, few numbers at a time you know the quench is effective okay but if you were to do that in a batch furnace okay you will have to accumulate accumulate and quench the parts at one time okay which is not very good okay. you don't get good results if you quench uh, a batch of parts which are small parts okay having large surface area at the same time so uh, for uh, mesh belt or shaker or you no know, for uh, and in hardening what happens is that you don't have need a large soaking time which is more than uh, maybe 30 to 40 minutes so your throughput is much higher uh, in terms of weight so one can afford it but uh, what you said is correct the surface area i see normally furnace manufacturers tell us that the loss of heat uh, is about One and a half kilowatt per square meter of surface area. So, mm -hmm. if you calculate the surface area for the use uh, useful uh, uh, loading uh, space, then the mesh belt uh, fares very badly in that respect. So, as an energy efficient device, you can't use the height. Right? You can't use the. Okay. We have one question from Mangesh Rajansa. He is saying that is there a relationship between quenching tank capacity and furnace capacity previously it used to be maintained at 1 is to 10 that is yes. 10 times oil volume nowadays it is 5 so uh, what should it be i think what happened is uh, as i told you you know people claim the loading capacity, but in practice they are not able to load so what i calculate as 1 is to 10 okay or to 5 uh, is actually much more because the claimed capacity let's say is 1500 kg but actually you are loading only 10000 uh, kg right because of geometry constraint or because actually the uh, loading space available is less that's why i worked out those ratios you know there are a number of people in the industry have complained that Uh, look, I got a 1200 kg furnace, but I cannot load more than 750 kg. Yes. So I wanted to find out why is that so. Okay, so one reason always felt was oh, okay, it is geometry. You know, the part is thin and you can't load. But the other factor is sometimes the space. See, normally when they raise, uh, they give a larger furnace. The, the most of the increase is in the height. Okay, right. like you know the the. because that is cheaper for the manufacturer mm -hmm. to increase the height to increase the base area is more expensive so what they do is uh, they give you a larger kg capacity by increasing the height okay and and that too they claim some disproportionate uh, this thing okay so what should determine the uh, see buying furnaces on basis weight is is not right you should buy it on the space basis you know 
like when you buy a flat you don't consider how much weight it can take what you consider is the square feet area or square meter area which you get right yeah. only only in case of furnaces it is on base uh, weight based there is one more aspect to it uh, what happens is uh, earlier this oil quenching once it uh, temperature coming to normalcy during the oil quenching was uh, the equipments were not that good but nowadays the equipments mm -hmm. have become so effective that the temperature of oil reduces uh, very fast okay and uh, that's why even the furnace manufacturers like ipson and all they have started giving this 1s to 7 1s to 7.5 ratio of oil tanks okay is the capacity of oil and uh, that's why we have uh, certain furnaces at uh, of ipson at uh, chakanpur plant where the capacity of oil uh, is less than uh, what uh, this uh, you know this american give is 1s to 10 so that is also i think one if aspect. you have a big parts it will work but if you have small parts then there will be some difficulty which i you know yeah yeah, yeah. of course my what guess happens is that is the core hardness is core hardness is a very small parts uh, there will be a problem yeah sure yeah. in any case that is not a big advantage you know sir because yeah, it's yeah, a one time yeah. investment your losses are going to be the same the drag out yes, losses sorry, yeah. whether you have a uh, less volume <laughs> in the tank or you have a large volume is going to be the same what you save on is only the initial investment in oil may ipson uh, does lot of claims uh, due to that so that is one uh, sandeep ji nitin bolta hai datar oh nikhil nitin bola yeah i joined very late datatre ji very sorry mala uh, link ko bhushira me ali but anyway me thoda okay मी थोड़ा बोलू शको कारण अजुन एक हेचर मेरे फैक्टर है वन ऑफ द मेन फैक्टर ऑफ द ऑइल क्वांटिटी दैट इफ यू गो ऑन द लेसर क्वांटिटी फाइन बट यू आर डिग्रेडिंग युअर ऑइल बिकॉज यू आर क्विंचिंग टेम्परेचर्स एंड इवन द स्पीड ऑफ कूलिंग इवन दू पुट हिट एक्सचेंजर्स वेरी हाई एफिशियंसी प्लेट टाइप पटर इट मे बी बट युअर ऑइल Temperature, if it remains for a longer time at higher temperature, they will get depleted with whatever additives are put, and that is crude. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. practical experience is that you have to yeah. have one is to ten ratio is always practical for yeah. mix of components, whether it is small, big. So you have to keep it higher. Many companies they are providing a separate sump of oil, and that get continuously feeded up in the quenching tank whenever it is required. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course, Nitin. Uh, we had talked on this. Uh, I think seven, eight years back, ten years back. Yeah, yeah. I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There is one more question that Ganpati was asking. If you can unmute him. Ganpati is already asking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, actually, the furnace suit formation in more in exact dampers. Uh, why why we are using in LPG gas, sir? No, no, not under fuel. Hello. Sorry. We could not hear your sir question properly. Sir, we are using continuous carburizing furnace, sir. Okay. Hmm. Hello. Yeah, yes. Yeah, in yeah, that uh, in uh, in that more suit formation in dampers, sir. Because of it's not coming to out gases, uh, not coming to we observed. Uh, but we are uh, doing in every month burnout process, sir. Yeah, what is how you do burnout? Ah, uh, actually, in the how long we, you do burnout? Ah, uh, we have to drop temperature eight hundred degree. Eight hundred degree. You remove the uh, endo gas. Yes, sir. Remove the endo gas up to CP. It called zero. Yeah. And then eight hundred uh, degree then, temperature. And then for how long you do the burnout? Up to eight hours, sir. And still, that uh, this thing. Where is this damper located, Ganpati? And that uh, Where entrance is this door and exit door. Uh, two da two dampers are available, sir. One is the entrance door and is the exit door. Do But that is in the cold chamber, right? That is on top of cold chamber. Yes, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. But there you cannot burn up. No, you need a high temperature because 
uh, you can burn off only the hot chamber you cannot burn off the cold chamber yes sir because yes, sir. there is there is no temperature there you need to clean it uh, with some other means ah uh, in that we have regularly we observe sir in that compared to uh, batch furnace in that the ccf more suit uh, coming sir you you must be feeding more gas right in cgc normally you feed yes, more sir, atmosphere sir. gas right yes sir ah so maybe that is why you get more suit because if you are feeding more gas their enrichment is also more in that case yes, sir, you sir. would have more suit in yeah what is your so cp maybe the point nine five sir zero point nine five oh <laughs> yes sir say i just cp point nine five you should never have actually it should not yes, happen sir. yeah what if it is one point two or something then it will happen as higher yeah. uh, right. i think what joshi uh, <coughs> sir said you know you have to clean it manually once and see how fast that gets uh, are your parts uh, suited no no sir no suit not observed in the top of the uh, some if uh, we observe in uh, any out cases not coming that time we observe top of the part uh, we observe suit sir before pinching it yeah yeah that is uh, you have to do it manually manually you have to clean that we also yes, have sir. those uh, uh, burnout uh, pipes which we clear uh, you know during the burning out we do it manually also at times yeah so those dampers we clean up manually also sometimes okay thank you sir thank you okay thank you okay thank you nice uh, presentation sir so there are two i think two, we have had lot of input. two comments on two the yeah 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 sandeep please go ahead there are two on the chat so one from surya and one from santosh thapar is soot density more in furnace atmosphere one one we observed soot only bottom of tray when more lpg pass through furnace that is mr surya yeah what is it only at the bottom yeah only at the bottom maybe when there is a temperature LPG difference LPG. you know at the bottom if the temperature is lower then there will be more soot uh, yeah, at the bottom absolutely. Absolutely. you know there is uh, that is one possibility i can think of otherwise yeah. are uh, are you do you have vertical uh, heaters or uh, horizontal heaters in that furnace mr surya mr surya you can mr. unmute surya. you surya vertical heaters he say are your heaters horizontally look no vertical vertical he is saying vertical vertical okay. in that case uh, i don't know unless unless there is no no heating at the bottom if the heaters are not effective at the bottom the temperature Heater, yeah if the, the temperature is low you have to only then check, you can have you this have the, uh, difference in yeah you will have to check the resistance of the heater and then uh, conclude in general okay. ratio yeah, ratio is 1 as to 9 yes. is taken as standard higher uh, there is another question mr B santosh thapar okay hmm. standard higher ratio higher better it is it will give better some life no is commenting on it so similar thing he is commenting mm -hmm. uh, okay yeah, it will give better supply of oil as it uh, deteriorates less as vapor banker formation will be less as volume increases also we get more fresh oil reaching to surface suppressing vapor blanket stage faster which is adverse uh, of we use lower ratio will get less oil to suppress vapor vapor blanket stage and causing faster degradation of oil yeah same thing which uh, and it in mention yeah i think everybody agrees that we need yeah, one to more oil to one to ten there is a universal agreement that that one to five seven is not good and there is not much advantage also in doing that you know yeah, yeah. unless what they get is save some you know fabrication cost yeah that does quality of lpg effect affect uh, carburizing if yes how to check lpg Now, if you add more LPG, then there is a problem of LPG. LPG has a standard uh, K uh, 
uh, carbon and yeah. uh, CO values, so they don't uh, they don't change. It's and a mixture of propane and butane. Propane, butane yeah. So they LPG. mix it to make it to LPG. Yeah. So they do that all standardized. Yes. So they they can that cannot change. So quality uh, will not affect it. Okay, thank you, sir. There were a lot of. Uh, thank you. Even I got a lot of inputs. Uh, in fact, after working in heat treatment for so long, so thank you very. Thank you. And uh, we thank will you, definitely sir. look at uh, methanol uh, uh, nitrogen process in our industry. So definitely, sir, I will, as a uh, as a standby, it will work wonderfully. Even if you don't want to use it as a primary, this thing it can work. No, no, we you can know, work it as a work. Yeah, we can work it out at. Yeah, main also, right? Level. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, we will see how how best we can do. Also, there are some people who are di directly giving some carburizing solutions. So it's a liquid carburizing. Yeah, that premix kind of thing, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only thing is that uh, it is premix. That means you don't have any control on the CP. Whatever yeah. you get, you get. Yeah. But they try to do it by you know. Uh, controlling the flow rate, but I don't yeah, know how correct. successful. Yeah. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank very you, Dr. Preji. Thank, thank you, you very much. Mixing uh, methanol and acetone. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for uh, giving us this very nice lecture on selection of equipments and a lot of inputs were uh, taken from this and will be taken by all our parties. Thank you very much. Thanks all and good night. Thank you. Bye. So good night. Signing off. Good night, everybody. Signing off from Pune today. I am ending the. Thank you.